earlier on, I released my review for episode six of Lord of the Rings, the Rings, the Rings, the Rings of Power. And, um, well, I thought it was terrible. It had potential, actually, this episode, but it was terrible. And even the battle in it was pretty much appalling. Fortunately, I'm not the only one who thinks so. And no, I'm not talking about other channels like mine and the big boys out there as well. No, because as I have alluded to in a couple of other videos, the mainstream media, the legacy dinosaur media, is finally starting to grind its gears and start to wake up and realize that if they don't start reporting honestly, they're gonna be left behind. And that's why we're starting to see more and more and more articles coming out talking about how these shows are complete and total trash. Hello. Welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. And if you're enjoying the content, I'd very much appreciate a subscribe. You know what to do. Alrighty then, let's go over to Forbes. Once again, they are leading the charge on backlash to Lord of the Rings, the Rings, the Rings, the Rings of Power, at least in terms of the uh, mainstream media. And we see here the Rings of Power Episode 6 review. Not even a battle can save this mess. Let's see what this guy thinks of the mess. Of course, it's Eric Kane once again. Um, he can compare his review to my review. So very, very good. Let's have a look. Uh, battles, cavalry charges, erupting volcanoes. The latest episode of the Rings of Power is the most action-packed yet, but even epic action cannot save this show from itself. Despite the flashy lights and explosions, the writing remains some of the worst I've seen in big-budget television. It's actually worse than I ever thought possible. Yes, the writing is appalling. Anything that happens in the story that doesn't make sense, and I dwell very much on the story aspect of it when I am reviewing, and not so much on the CGI or the, uh, or the costumes, although I do touch on them as well. No, what I tend to focus on is a point-by-point -point breakdown of the story and the things that don't make sense. That's my particular focus. Okay, I wanted so badly for this show to be good. Well, I mean, why did you? You must have known the writing was on the wall months ago, like we all did. You can't be that stupid, Eric Kane. Your writing is surprisingly good. Anyway, he wanted it to be good. I guess everybody kind of wanted it to be good, but I don't think anybody really believed it would be. But this is neither a good adaptation of Tolkien's work or good generic fantasy. Yes, said it before, take away all the Tolkien references and it's still absolute pap. It's a disaster, plain and simple. Episode 6 might n just be the worst yet, because in part we get none of the Harfoots and the Mysterious Stranger, or the endearing... Really? He thinks the Harfoots are good? No, that's one of the worst things in the show, mate. No, 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 I was happy that there were no Harfoots. Very strange that you think that. All the endearing Durin Elrond f f friendship... <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say there, but it ain't a friendship and focus instead on the show's most grating storylines and characters, the Galadriel-Numenor plot and the Aronde Bronwyn plot. Aronwyn. Uh-huh. Finally come Gal- I forgot his name was Aronde. I've been calling him Prelf for so long now. <laughs> Finally come galloping together this week, and my, oh my, is it a hot mess. Before I get into all that, let me give credit where it's due. Adar is a terrific character. No, he's not. And this week made me like him even more. I don't like him at all. He calls out Galadriel at one point, which earns him a few extra points. Yes, okay. Uh, but mostly he's really just fascinating villain. No, he's not. He's a generic insert of unnecessary villain because there is no villain if you are keeping Sauron hidden inside Holbrad. <clears throat> and Joseph Mould's performance is top notch. Well, I mean, not really. It's a bit wooden, really. There's not much for him to do. I'm not blaming the actor. I just don't think that there's very much to the character. He's not interesting at all. Was he... Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't even care. I'm not even going to ask any questions about how, where he came from. Quite frankly, he makes everyone else in this episode look bad. No. No. Adar gives a really stirring speech to his children, the orcs. Now, you see, you've fallen for it, Eric. The orcs are not sympathetic. The orcs are mindless, evil drones. That's what they were conceived as. It's what they are. It's what they should be. Deal with it. Ugh. At the beginning of the episode that makes Bronwyn's goofy rally the peasant speech sound silly by comparison. Indeed, everyone from Gilgalad to Arfarazan to Galadriel could take some leadership lessons from the Dark Elf. Well, there's no question there. He has the absolute loyalty of the Orcs. Of course, there's not really anybody else who could get the loyalty of the Orcs, so not much of a challenge. Whatever. I'll reiterate what I've said a few times before. I'm rooting for the Orcs at this point. The closest thing I've come to cheering in this show is the end of the episode when all those smug Numenorians and Queen Smug herself, Galadriel, got caught between an erupting volcano. Can't argue with that. 
We'll get to that. Blah, blah, blah. The Southlanders have to leave the semi-fortified tower and go back to the village. <clears throat> See? Told you that doesn't make any sense. They set a trap for the orcs who walk into it blindly. Sorry, my <clears throat> voice is very hoarse today. In the village, the peasant army barricades those all too weak, all those too weak to fight inside the tavern because I guess they want to make it easier for the orcs to burn them all to death. They refer to <laughs> building as their keep despite it not being at a fortified location at all. Yes, yes, I went through all these. Bronwyn saves are on there. Oh yeah, that's true, she does. So that means that she has now got a kill count of like three on the orcs. Yes, well, the peasants fight the orcs and um, of course there's the slightly cle clever ruse where they send in the human fighters and make it look like the good uh, guys have won. Then they actually take them down with the archers that weren't there. That was the part I thought was actually slightly clever, disguising humans as orcs and sending them in. Don't know why they didn't just shout, stop, it's me, but whatever. Maybe if they gagged them inside the helmets, that might have made more sense. But then, they, hey, that would be thinking about what you're doing. Uh, the healer, you'll note, does no actual healing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Galadriel to the rescue. Here we go. Here comes the ridiculousness of it all. Thousands of miles away. <laughs> The three Numenorean ships with 300 men and approximately 300 horses are sailing across the ocean from Numenor to Middle-earth. Miraculously, they'll make the 2,000-mile trip in time to save the day. The 1,800-mile sea voyage and 200-mile ride will take a couple of nights. Yes, they arrive the next day. <clears throat> they will charge all the way from the sea to Mount Doom in full battle regalia. I have another post about all the fast travel this feat requires going up in the morning. It's blah, blah, blah. Well, I will certainly check that out if it's any good. In any case, Galadriel and Miriel and Elendil and Isildur and the others in the meager fighting force know exactly where to go. Damn, I forgot to mention that in my review. That was one of the things that confused me the most. How did they know where to go? Isn't the Southlands bigger than one village? Oh, well, I've said it now, so that counts too. Mind you, none of the people in this village know Hullbrand, so I'm not sure he knew the orcs would be here. Presumably, whatever he chased, he was chased off from before he met Galadriel was not the same place, but okay. Don't mind all the logical inconsistencies, folks. Just look at the pretty shiny things and pretend it's all just fine. Yes, yes, yes. There's another battle where the Numenorians show up, and none of the good guys of any importance are killed or even badly wounded. By the end of it, Bronwyn, who was on death's door just hours earlier, seems totally healed and fine. Yes, agreed. By golly, Theo, Arondir replies, why is there, why is, why that there is the commander of the Northern Army's Galadriel herself? Isn't she swell? Oh yeah, that is a cringe-ass line. Gee, she sure is, Theo replies, snapping his finger in delight, <laughs> governor. All this commander captain soldier stuff is really wearing thin, by the way. Galadriel asks Isildur his rank on the ship and he shuffles his feet and says, stable hand. And then he's later a fully armoured warrior fighting the orcs. To be fair, he's kept in the reserves for some reason, Muriel and maybe two dozen riders hang back. Hmm, interesting. But she sends him in when she sees he's just itching for a fight, like a coach sending in a fresh player. He's the only one who the reserves sent in to help in the fight, which looks extremely silly. Not as silly as Galadriel looks in that ridiculous armor. Why is she even wearing such heavy armor if she just plans on dodging everything? Who thought this was a good idea? Yes, true. Okay, so he thinks Adar is the best character. I strongly disagree. But of course, um, <clears throat> we need to see uh, the bit about Mount Doom. So, Waldreg, I guess that was the meth head guy's name. Waldreg has taken the blade key up to the tower and inserts it into the lock, which breaks the dam and lets a bunch of water out of a nearby reservoir into the system of tunnels and trenches that the orcs just dug. And then this, in turn, all goes to Mount Doom, which, hey, look, it's right there. It's been right over there this whole time. Yeah, it, it was never in. It was never visible in any shot. We never knew that the village was right near Mount Doom erupts, blasting the village and its occupants with fiery balls of magma and stone boulders. I hope it kills all of them honestly and wipes that smug, blank, annoying expression off Galadriel's face once and for all. I can't remember the last time I rooted this hard against the good guys and the bad guys for the bad guys in a show that wasn't The Walking Dead, but I like Adar more than any of these characters and it's not even close. Well, it does certainly seem that he likes Adar and I disagree with him about that, but... You know, that's just my take. Let me know what you think about all this rubbish from the Lord of the Rings, the Rings, the Rings, the Rings, the Rings of Power in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to help me to grow. Thank you very much. I'll be back with another video for you very soon. But until then, see you next time.